Mailbag. Mail we have a mailbag. We have a few mailbags in the mailbag. I do use that word uh, as what's in the mailbag as well as what the mailbag actually is. It's a verb, it's a noun, it's an adjective. Mailbag's really whatever you want it to be. <laughs> so I have lots of mailbags in the mailbag for this, you for know, this, this mailbag. mailbag. Mm. We actually have a question. Also, you guys, I was sick last week, so that's maybe why my voice sounds a little different. In case you're like, wow, she I was going to wonder why your voice was so fucked up. She sounds so fucked up. <laughs> I'm better now, though, <laughs> and I didn't get COVID. Good. My boyfriend had COVID. I somehow didn't get COVID. So go, go me and my immune system. We have a question and there's no, it's all on the subject and there's no body and it's for Kevin. Oh. And it says, does Kevin do rent by mail now that he lives on the road and in France? Hi, Troy. Uh, so the answer, short answer is no. Uh, I have not been doing the rent by mail. He's just like, fuck you guys. <laughs> I mean, the main reason is because I was on the road and I didn't have a fixed address to rent movies to go to for more than a week. And, and then I was in France and we don't do rent by mail overseas. So no, I have not been. And now I'm back in Seattle. So now I don't, I don't have to. Uh, hey. Hey. Okay. Bye. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. Oh, this is from Sandra. Mm-hmm. Well, if you haven't been watching, Sandra's great. She sex has her with Sex Sandra. with Sandra segments. They're okay. wonderful. Question, she asks, if you could program a film series, what would the theme be? I okay. think that I would like to program a series of women in prison films. That's cool. Checks Under, out. Huh? Checks out. Yeah, something I'd do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I think that the genre is very underappreciated. A lot of people haven't seen a ton of them. They don't really understand that there's a lot of variety inside that. Yeah. And also, times being what they are, I think it's a good way to like open a discussion about that kind of movie and what kind of place it has in culture anymore. You have any titles off the top of your head that would definitely be involved? Black Mama, White Mama, The Mothers, which I talked about on oh, this yeah. show. I would love to program Bamboo House of Dolls, but I don't know if that's anything uh, any audience could or should tolerate. <laughs> Probably like a real old standard like Big Bird Cage or Big Doll House or something like that. Hmm. I'm a big fan of the genre. It's probably my one of my like my second or third favorite subgenre yeah, period. I've seen mm. uh like hardly any, so when when I decide to get on that, I know who to ask. Yeah. We have a whole section upstairs and most of those movies are really cool. Yeah, and it's in the porn room. It is in the sex blow room, yeah. Which is interesting. I mean it kinda belongs there. Yeah. It's definitely it exploitation at uh -huh, least for sure so something i was <laughs> thinking about years ago was a festival that had that embodied the vibe and energy of twin peaks because i think it was after i rewatched the season or the show and it was going to be called sounds like twin peaks but okay film festival <laughs> and the movies i have listed here are river's edge picnic at hanging rock bunny lake is missing brick Donnie Darko, Carnival of Souls, Smooth Talk, Bully, and Mean Creek. So that would be mine. I would just do it in North Bend and just have that. I would just take over the North Bend Film Festival with my Twin Peaks Festival. Yeah, but I think, I mean, happen. all of these things we can do. Yeah. You want to know mine? Yes, yes I would, of course we want to please. know yours. I would do the, you know, famous Japanese gender Kinji Fukusaku, and the it would be called Fukusaku 68 and it'd be the four films he did in 1968. Ooh. Which is Gambler's Farewell, The Green Slime, Black Lizard, and Blackmail is My Life. Ooh, those middle two are classics. Black I Lizard's hard to see. Kevin, do you have any off the top of your head? Uh, I just thought of one, actually. Hell yeah. And it's, it's, it calls back to an episode when before, when I talked about the director, Nam Lai Choi, or Lam Gai Kai, the guy who did The Cat, and he did Ricky O, and all those. Ooh, uh, I would yeah, like yeah. to do, I mean, a festival of his stuff, because this shit is still weirdly underseen, and, and it kind of is, a lot of it's fantasy and bizarre, violent stuff, but he also has, like, a revenge one called Her Vengeance that's really solid, mm. and, mm. like, just these, like, down and dirty, like, Hong Kong. Oh, I've seen Her movies, Vengeance, like, yeah. from the Walled City and shit, and so I think it would be fun to do. Tight. That was a good question. That's something I actually think about. That and, like, what movies would you formulate, like, a triple or, like, mm. quadruple feature or something? I always like to think of what things would pair well together. Yeah. Let's see what we got next here. We have a William Goss. Do you want to do a Will Goss next? 
I'll do it. Okay. If you guys happen to have any, what are some of your favorite audio commentaries, comical or otherwise, besides Ben Affleck for Armageddon? Mm. For anyone curious about the practical considerations of filmmaking, I'd recommend Christopher Nolan's track on Insomnia. That's a good one. Which is the only one I know that actually reorders the film to match the film's shooting schedule. Keep it sleazy, Will. So I, I'm going to start from the top and admit that I like never listen to commentary tracks. Oh. And I haven't in a very long time. I don't, I don't know. I just, they never like, a, like, I never, I'm like, you know, I just watched that movie. I want to watch it with the commentary track. And I should, I should go back to some favorites and check out, especially because I have so many DVDs and Blu-rays that are just have those audio mm -hmm. commentary tracks on it. So if you guys out there have any suggestions for me, Viva at Scarecrow.com, what audio commentary track should I, should I listen to? Well, he, I mean, I don't care what he says. Uh, the uh, commentary on Armageddon. It doesn't just feature Ben Affleck. It's great. <laughs> and there's actually two commentary tracks on that Criterion disc. And the other one is the science, like technical advisors. Oh, interesting. And they're doing stuff like, yeah, this uh, this is fake, but it's cool. We don't care. So that's a good one. Another one that is, no one no one remembers is for the I believe it's 1998 film Lost in Space, which is a terrible movie. Yeah. But the, uh, one of the commentary tracks has a couple of the screenwriters on it, and they're just like, we fucked this up. <laughs> they're like, damn it. They're and like, now we we're fucked recording this up. This like, the studio had all these notes. We tried to answer the notes. Like, it just, we ru <laughs> everything got ruined. Like, this movie turned out badly. That's pretty similar to the local movie Cthulhu that was made here. Mm. You remember that? And if you listen to the comedy track on that, it starts with them going, sometimes when you make your first film, nothing goes right. So hopefully, yeah. this could be a, a helpful for future filmmakers. Yeah. When we talk about all the things that went wrong. Also, I don't know if it's been ported over to any of the home video releases, but my old Strange Days Laserdisc had not a full audio commentary, but like a 45 minute lecture that Catherine Bigelow gave at a college right. where she just breaks down the opening sequence where the guys are robbing the, the store and get chased and the guy falls off the roof and dies. It's like all in one shot, think, one POV shot. I think even the DVD is out of print for Strange Days right now. I'm pretty sure it is. There is, I have a really nice I German Blu-ray. I for $3. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have a German Blu-ray. There's also a UK Blu-ray, but don't buy that. It's censored. Okay, why, yeah, no. Yeah. Kevin, any favorite commentary tracks? Uh, yeah, I love commentary tracks. I, I know. <laughs> All commentary tracks, and I'll buy it. I'm disappointed when DVDs and Blu-rays don't have commentary tracks. Ooh, and one more, one wait. more. There's a really good one oh, with yeah, uh, with uh, Schwarzenegger and John Milius on Conan the Barbarian, where uh -huh. Milius is very mad at Schwarzenegger for not really paying attention Giving to the anything. movie. <laughs> He's like, she's very pretty, and Milius is like, she's a Valkyrie. <laughs> <laughs> Some favorite commentary tracks. So I'm actually going to talk about one in one of my picks uh, Ooh. today. But Paul Thomas Anderson on Boogie Nights. Ooh. For sure. Uh, and I the past one is that. fun, but the PTA one is really is really good, and it's like the only one. He, he did one on, on Sydney on Heart 8 also that's really good. The Everything Everywhere All at Once uh, commentary track with the Daniels is also really awesome, speaking of a recent one. The uh, two that I watch I'll, I watch every year, I watch Slacker and Richard Linklater's first movie, which is on that disc. It's, you can't learn how to plow by reading books. I think and, you've talked about that on this show before. Yeah, and he does like a commentary track, and that one's almost impossible to watch without the commentary track, but it's very instructive. It's like how this guy just made a movie on his own and like taught himself how to make movies. I'll just pick one. The Incredibles 2 actually has a really good commentary track where Brad Bird turns it over to the animators, and so it's like each of the animators of each scene talking about how they, they had the process of them animating it, so it's like a really cool uh, sort of nuts and bolts on how, how one of those movies gets made. Um, yeah, and those are just a few, but I absolutely love commentary tracks. Like, pro if I did, if I if I'd seen that question earlier this week, I probably you would have, have like I would, compiled it. Written a hundred down, do so. people still yeah. make them as much as they? There, not there's as much a lot of them on like though. boutique yeah. catalog yeah. title releases the, um, and stuff. But like new stuff, uh -huh. still. The Mad God Blu-ray that I just got, the uh, Phil Tippett movie has one with him and uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, I have not listened to it yet though, but I imagine it's good. One thing that I <laughs> wish that would happen more because I don't really love audio commentaries either, but I love the very, very heavily technical text commentaries that you used to find. There's a really good one on the abyss, mm. which is like, it just, like every shot, it will just be like, well, here's how we did this shot. And like, here's where, here's how we formulated all this stuff. And it's just sort of explaining to you in much more detail than you could get from someone sort of speaking extemporaneously yeah. how they pulled a lot of that movie off. Yeah, I mean, I like, I just, I'm just really into the filmmaking of, mm -hmm. and so it's like anytime someone, with the filmmakers talking about it, but there's, there's a lot of bullshit commentaries where it's just like, 
people sort of hanging out and not. Have you ever listened to the one on In the Mouth of Madness? I have not, but I have listened to Big Trouble in Little China one, which is just him and Kurt Russell talking like, about tele- their kids. Yeah, that one's really, that one's <laughs> really good. How's that your, one's good. How's your kid, Kurt Russell Jr.? He's fine. How's your kid, uh, John Carpenter Jr. or whatever? <laughs> He's fine. Look at this scene. This was dumb. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, the 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 in the mouth of madness one's really funny because uh, Carpenter, you know, he's kind of famously bored with his own work, especially as he's gotten older, and he's it's like him and the cinematographer, and he, he they're just sitting there long periods of silence, and Carpenter will go, so how'd you like this one? And the guy will be like, normal, <laughs> normal. You know, it's just like totally they're just not having a conversation at all. It's really funny. We've all forgotten the very best audio commentary ever to be put on a DVD, and it's the one that Kevin and I did for Furious. Oh, yeah, uh, shit. I knew there was one we were forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys did an audio commentary. We, we interviewed the director and they put it on the DVD. All right, am I reading this one? Yeah. Anyway. All right, well, we've got a letter here. and we Oh, it's, a, it's from Tim. Oh, okay. That's all it says. All right. Dear Emily, Matt, and Rich, my name is Tim, and I love the show. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, and I've been Tim. watching since the beginning, oh. and it has introduced me to some movies that I've never seen or heard of, and I'm glad video stores like Scarecrow still exist, and I hope to make it there someday. We hope you do too, Tim. My question is, there are many movies that are underrated or forgotten. Do you guys have any that you consider underrated or forgotten? I would love to hear any movies you recommend. My top ten list is, says Tim, one, Journey to the Beginning of Time, two, Mr. Baseball, which I just watched recently and is pretty good, three, Last of the Dogmen, also I watched that pretty recently, good, The Greatest Show on Earth, Capone from 1975, The Phantom of Hollywood, Christmas Evil, The Quest from 1996, Daylight, underrated Stallone, and Joysticks. Damn, I've only seen Christmas Evil out of all of those, so those are some underrated and forgotten ones for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, what do you got? I would love to bring up, as I do usually, uh, Primudos, Lords of Darkness, mm-hmm. the German shock horror that I talked about way early on in the show. Always love bringing up Out of the Blue, which is something that's definitely underseen. Kind of swear when you do it too much, though. <laughs> was forgotten for a while. Oh, I'll try. Well, do you have any that you want to talk about while I endlessly Uh, scroll here? Two that I thought of. One is called Shoot It Black, Shoot It Blue. I forget what year it's from. It's from the mid-70s. And almost nobody's heard of or seen this thing. It's very timely now. It's about a young black boy who he's, like, obsessed with movie making. And he's, he's like, got his first camera. He films a police shooting. And uh, the dirty cop who perpetrated it, like, comes after him. And it's Michael Moriarty is the, is the bad cop. Mm. Really good movie. We only have it on tape, and the tape looks like shit. You, it's, <laughs> it's really not easy to look at. Like, it's just sort of like a really bad copy. There's another movie that we don't have, and as far as I know, has never been put out on video. And I, I have seen it non licitly and it's called The Dion Brothers, also known as The Gravy Train. It's Margot Kidder, Stacey Keach, and Frederick Forrest. And Stacey Keach and Frederick Forrest are, are the Dion Brothers, and they're like criminals on a cross-country road trip with their with their girl and um it's written by terrence malick it's sort of like a road a road movie comedy directed by jack starrett who made a lot of biker movies and other things around the same time really really cool one of those like total underground things that no one's ever heard of and at the time would have been a really scathing indictment of capitalism for that for that time really good movie there's a movie called pathogen that was directed by a girl named emily something when she was like 12 years old well, it's not even that this movie was necessarily, like, great, but the fact that a 12-year-old girl fucking directed it and, like, had this and it came out on DVD and everything is endlessly admirable. Good questions, though. What's next? What's next? One more, I think, right? Yes, one more. To Scarecrow, to Viva Physical Media, Sophia and Maverick. So this is the full letter that we lost half of Sophia's letter last time. Last time. Cutest little stationery. Dear Physical Media, I'm so sorry my last letter was misplaced. That is, that is not, not your fault. something you have to be sorry about. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted to ask what your basic bitch movie faves or recommendations were. When I'm trying to meet other film fans, I often get called a normie or basic. What? That's so mean. We would come uh, hang out with us. I don't care for that. I feel good about my film viewing experiences. Good. And confident that my favorite movies come from a place of love and appreciation. I've seen lots and lots of films of all genres, decades, and countries of origin, and yet I still love Gremlins. So what? (laughs) 
In this spirit, what are your two's basic bitch films? Thank you so much. P.S. I'm not offended by being called basic, but it's disheartening to hear that. And I feel like I'm being written off as a person entirely by someone I just met. It's rude, frowning face. Yeah, it is rude. I agree. <laughs> I like I like their letters very much. Me too. Keep writing us letters. Also, I love your handwriting so much. May I see it? Yeah. Just He's very nice. I from off camera real quick. Yeah. I know I know our number one basic bitch movie and it's our both our favorite movie of all time and it is The Empire Strikes Back. Correct. The Empire and Strikes like, Back. You know, and now that Star Wars is popular again or they're making them all the time. It's even more basic like bitcher. Say that and people go, yeah, sure or whatever. But there was a fucking time when only Matt and I and like 10 other people in the world still cared about Star Wars. Oh so. man. That is true. And then that glory was just ripped right out of And like hand. every time I watch The Empire Strikes Back, I inevitably find myself texting Kevin and being like, this movie's pretty fucking good, Man, dude. Oh, oh, here I am crying because I'm watching this. That's yeah. all. No reason. Yeah. yeah. The reason. So, I mean, that would be my number one. Mm -hmm. Well, number we mentioned uh, something earlier that is also can definitely be all of our basic bitch uh, movie, and that's Titanic. For sure. Titanic. For sure. But, I mean, I'm a big Cameron aficionado, so, I mean, Aliens, I have already watched twice this year and it's only yeah. the first day of February. Oh, you can call so. Avatar some basic bitch stuff. Yeah, that movie's great. True Lies I watch all the time. The Mission Impossible movies, love those. Mm. We're also uh, our big Michael Bay people. Hell yeah. Bad Boys 2 I watch routinely. Bad Boys 2 is really funny. I love Armageddon. We talked about that earlier. Pearl Harbor is one of my favorites <sighs> I love ever. Pearl. Pineapples, baby. Pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the movie Super Bad. I feel like that's one of my basic bitch movies. I think it's such a funny... Those Like that comedy, I know you guys don't agree, but Zoolander I think is a fucking perfect movie. Perfect 100% all the way through. It's so fucking funny. I love Mean Girls, obviously. Clueless, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I also don't, like, subscribe to the whole, like, basic bitch nonsense. It's kind of like the whole guilty pleasure thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't, you know what? It's just my pleasure. Yeah. All right? Let's just reclaim what we like as stuff we like. And... You know, don't, Let's not be the kind of organization around, that labels people. Yeah, don't hang around s snobby people who, you know, yeah, think somebody's your gonna taste pick on you for is it. basic. It's good, that, it's good to have, like, really good taste in that you grow and appreciate things that are better than things that you used to watch. And then also it's, yeah. it's, it's okay to, like, still love those things. And you yeah. can contain multitudes. You can love, like me, you can love Titanic and then you could love Promutos, you know? You can love Mr. Too Little. And you can love Pearl Harbor. And should. Like a flag? <laughs> and let's just throw in the dog father eating spaghetti. Just like, just, I think we need it right now. With the flag superimposed With the flag. over I think we could all use it right now. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, the gauntlet's been thrown down at that point. Um, also, the, at the front of this envelope, it's a. Uh, it says, choosing what you want is an exciting, happy moment. I wonder what kinds of things I'll find today. It's like a little quote. And then she points to it with an arrow and says, me when I'm at Scarecrow Video. Aww. So cute. What a lovely person. I'm Thank glad Thank you, Sophia and your cat Maverick. We love you. Thank you. And you know what, you guys? That's I mailbag. I believe that was a mail.